Hey, hey, congratulations. We've made it to our last video. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. But we're not done yet. There's still a little bit of work left to do. Today, I want to talk about how markets work. Let's do a quick review. This is a graph of a product market. Natural market forces of supply and demand work together through the concept of voluntary exchange. By making choices in order to maximize their own incentives, firms and consumers will silently negotiate on a price and a quantity until an equilibrium is established. But this price and quantity is not set in stone. It can change. When prices and quantities in the marketplace fluctuate, it can help change the answer to the three economic questions of what to produce, how to produce it, and for whom it's produced. So what exactly causes changes in prices and quantities in the market? The answer is fundamental changes in supply and demand. Supply and demand can increase and decrease depending on various factors. And when these changes occur, it will cause fluctuations in price levels and quantities in the market. Today, I want to focus on what causes these changes and the effects of them. Several factors can fundamentally change demand, including consumer income levels, consumer tastes and preferences, and consumers' expectations for the future of the economy. Demand is defined as the different quantities of goods and services that consumers are willing and able to purchase at different price levels in the market. When factors fundamentally cause demand to increase in the market, this means that consumers are willing and able to demand a greater quantity at every price level, or that they're more willing and able to pay higher prices at every quantity. Either way, a demand increase will cause the demand curve to shift to the right, and at its new equilibrium point with supply, prices for the product will increase and the quantity of output in the market will increase. So an increase in demand in the market will cause product prices to increase and market quantity to increase. When factors fundamentally cause demand to decrease in the market, consumers are less willing and able to demand the same quantity at every price level, or are only willing to pay lower prices at every quantity. A decrease in demand causes the demand curve to shift to the left, and at a new equilibrium point with supply, price level decreases and quantity of output decreases. So a decrease in demand in the market will cause product prices to decrease and market quantity to decrease. Just like demand, supply can also fundamentally change in the market. Among the factors that can affect supply are resource prices, actions of government like taxes and subsidies, and the productivity of resources. Supply is defined as the different quantities of goods and services that firms are willing and able to produce at different price levels in the market. When factors fundamentally cause supply to increase, this means that firms are more willing and able to supply greater quantities at every price level, or are more willing and able to supply the same quantity at lower prices. When supply increases, the supply curve shifts to the right, and at a new equilibrium with demand, we'll see product prices decrease and quantity of output increase. An increase in supply in the marketplace causes product prices to decrease and quantity of output to increase. However, when supply fundamentally decreases, Firms are less willing and able to supply the same quantity at every price level, or will only supply the same quantity at higher prices. In the market, a decrease in supply means the supply curve shifts to the left, and at a new equilibrium point with demand, we see the product price increase in the market and the quantity of output decrease. A decrease in supply will cause product prices to increase and quantity of output in the market to decrease. As a consumer, you affect demand every day. You also help to influence product prices and product output in the market. You also feel the effects of changes in supply, either because products are more or less expensive, or they are more or less available. However, you've also seen supply and demand in movies. In Episode 4, A New Hope, Luke and Ben Kenobi are looking to book passage to Alderaan so they can meet up with Princess Leia and deliver the plans to the Death Star. Only passengers, myself, the boy, two droids, and no questions asked. However, to pay for their transportation aboard the Millennium Falcon, Luke has to sell his X-34 Landspeeder. When he does, he doesn't seem very happy about the price he sold it at. Look at this. Ever since the XP-38 came out, they just aren't in demand. It'll be enough. Aha! Did you catch that? Luke had to sell his X-34 Landspeeder for a lesser price because a newer model, the XP-38, is now on the market. Because there's a better model available, the demand for Luke's X-34 Speeder has decreased causing the price of it to fall and the quantity sold in the market to decrease. You've also seen supply and demand in Frozen. After winter hits, both Anna and Kristoff head into Wandering Oaken's trading post and sauna to buy winter gear. 
The outpost was unprepared for winter because it's supposed to be the middle of summer. And as a result, there's not much available. Big summer blowout, half off swimming suits, clogs, and a sun bomb of my own invention, yeah? Oh, great. For now, um, how about boots? Winter boots and dresses? That would be in our winter department. Both Anna and Kristoff are shocked by the incredibly high prices they're gonna have to pay. That'll be 40. 40? No, 10. Oh dear. In fact, so Oaken states the reason for himself. Stock? For the supply and demand to have a big problem? What's know? happened here is that the trading post has a decreased supply of winter gear, causing the prices of them to increase and the quantity sold on the market to decrease. Yes. Now back up while I deal with this crook here. Sorry, Kristoff. It's just supply and demand. In fact, he should know better. Kristoff himself says that his ice business is suffering because of the unexpected winter. You want to talk about a supply and demand problem? I sell ice for a living. Ooh, that's a rough business to be in right now. I mean, that is really... Mm, that's unfortunate. Still when Queen Elsa froze the fjord and covered Arendelle in snow, she changed the taste and preferences of everyone who lived there. Now in the middle of a brutal winter, the people of Arendelle will not demand ice the same as they used to, causing demand for ice to decrease, the price of it to fall, and the quantity being sold in the market to decrease. Let's do some practice with changes in supply and demand and try to predict how price level and output will be affected in the market. Here we have a graph for the electronics market in Japan. Suppose that the national income level in Japan were to rise. Demand for electronics in Japan will increase now that consumers have more income to spend. This will cause prices of electronics to increase and the quantity sold in the market to increase. Here we see the market for bottled water in Canada. Suppose that the price of crude oil an input that's used in the making of plastic were to plummet on the world market. If crude oil is now less expensive, and crude oil is an important resource in the making of plastic, and plastic is needed in order to bottle water in Canada, that means it's now cheaper to produce bottled water. And as a result, the supply of bottled water in Canada will increase, causing the price of it to decrease and the quantity sold on the market to increase. Provided is a market for rice in India. Suppose that reports indicate that the price of rice will increase next month in India. Knowing that rice will soon become more expensive, consumers are going to rush into the marketplace and buy rice at the current price before it rises. This will cause the demand for rice to increase, driving up its price and increasing the quantity available in the market. Provided is a graph for the car market in Belgium. Suppose that the European Union puts out a report that predicts that a worldwide recession is imminent. With this report, Belgian consumers are going to become scared for the future. They're not sure if they're going to have their job or their income in the coming months. As a result, they're less likely to buy products, especially expensive products like cars, at this moment. As a result, the demand for cars in Belgium is going to decrease, causing the prices to decrease and the quantity sold in the market to decrease. Provided is a graph for the tire market in Russia. In order to reduce pollution, suppose the Russian government places an excise tax on tire firms per tire that they produce. If Russian tire firms are going to be taxed for every tire that they now produce, they're going to look to avoid that tax by reducing the production of tires. As a result, the supply of tires in Russia is going to decrease, causing the price of tires to increase and the quantity sold in the market to decrease. Provided is a graph for the car market in the United States during the 1920s. Suppose that Henry Ford implements the standardized work system known as the assembly line in his Ford automobile plants. Now this really happened in history, and the effects were real as well. By implementing standardized work through the assembly line in his plants, Ford dramatically increased the productivity of his workforce. And thus, he increased the supply of cars in the United States, driving down their price and increasing the quantity available in the market. And here's some real facts. At the beginning of the decade, it took one worker 12 and a half hours to assemble a Model T chassis with no assembly line. By the middle of the decade, that time was cut to one and a half hours. The annual production of Model T's jumped from less than 6,000 at the beginning of the 1920s to over 600,000 by mid-decade. And the price plummeted from $950 to $260. There it is. An increase in supply caused quantity to dramatically increase and price level to dramatically decrease. Provided is a graph for the market for beef in Brazil. Suppose that health services in Brazil reported that Brazil's beef may be contaminated and unsafe to eat. When consumers get word of this, their tastes and preferences when it comes to food may change. I mean, come on, I prefer to live and not die of food poisoning. As a result, demand for beef in Brazil is going to decrease causing the price for beef to decrease and the quantity sold in the market to decrease. Let's do one more. Provided is a graph for the vaccine market in England. 
Suppose that the British Parliament authorizes per-unit subsidies for firms that produce the Zika vaccine in order to prevent it from coming to Great Britain. Subsidies are when the government pays a firm to produce more of a good that they see as beneficial to society. It's essentially a grant in the production process. In order to get that money, firms have to produce those goods. In order to get those subsidies, firms are going to have to increase the supply of vaccines in the British market, causing the price of vaccines to fall, making them more affordable, and increasing the quantity available to the public. Okay, it's time for a quick review of today's major points. Various factors can fundamentally change supply and demand, causing fluctuations in price levels and quantities in the market. Some of the most important factors that can affect demand are income, taste and preferences, and future expectations for the economy. An increase in demand means consumers are more willing and able to purchase products in greater quantities at every price level, or are willing to pay greater price levels at every quantity. An increase in demand in the marketplace will drive up prices and increase the output available in the market. A decrease in demand, consumers are less willing and able to demand the same quantity at every price level, or will only demand the same quantity at a lower price. A decrease in demand in the marketplace will cause price levels to fall and the quantity of output available in the market to decrease. The factors that can fundamentally change supply are resource prices, actions of government like taxes and subsidies, and the productivity of inputs. An increase in supply means firms are more willing and able to supply greater quantities at every price level, or are willing and able to supply the same quantity at a lesser price. An increase in supply in the marketplace will cause prices to fall and the quantity of output available in the marketplace to increase. A decrease in supply means that firms are less willing and able to supply the same quantity at every price level, or will only supply the same quantity at a higher price. A decrease in supply in the marketplace will cause prices to rise and the quantity of output available in the market to decrease. And that's it for Intro to Macro. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in class.